What is empathy? And is it even good to have empathy? There are some people, too, who may take the word and reframe it as being an empath if you supposedly have high empathy. I think, though, this is rather like the word love. Love can mean a lot of different things, and there might be something even better than the conventional ideas about love. Some say, for instance, understanding, or how this ties into the word respect can be more crucial than the conventional ideas of love from a religious perspective, say. Now, for years, I used to think there are two types of people, the empathetic or quote-unquote sensitive, perceptive person, and the unempathetic, callous, you might say, type of person who is not aware much of anything except uh, the more um, egregious things like uh, high levels of aggression, high levels of fear, terror even. But is that true? Is it true some people are not very sensitive? And then this should be called a lack of empathy. Or is everybody on the planet almost sensitive unless they're zoned out or physically asleep? Now, I have seen several approaches talking of this. Fascinatingly, a Sam Vaknin, V-A-K-N-I-N, who lives in Russia or has, he has a PhD, interestingly, in philosophy, not psychology, has written a number of books on what is often termed narcissism. One of the books is The World of the Narcissist. And it's a rather short book, fascinating uh, on one page regarding a short paragraph on empathy. I would state, by the way, he does not have a strong background in mathematics, and so I see issues with clarity here. But at any rate, he states in this paragraph the, quote, narcissist, finds it difficult to identify with the emotions and needs of others, but is very attuned to their reactions when they are relevant to himself. Vagnin then puts in, in parentheses, cold empathy. To continue then, he states in this short paragraph on empathy, consequently, he overestimates the effect he has on others or underestimates it and in parentheses, the classic narcissist never underestimates the effect he has on others, dash, but the inverted narcissist does. Now I'd like to bring up too a term that is not in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders used by psychiatrists, especially in America, and a number of psychologists. And that term is sadism or maybe a precursor word used to be sadomasochism. Now, sadism, sadism implies wanting to hurt other people. And um, moreover, to do so because one enjoys seeing other people suffering, especially if one can have a hand in it also. Now, I've seen this play out in a number of ways, uh, say in a person's marriage where there was a bitter divorce, or with regard to a parent one was bitter about one's whole life and couldn't process properly, couldn't understand that parent, where they were coming from thus. I've seen this play out then, and I prefer not to use the term sadistic or sadism, but rather displacing. Now Charles Bruner has written a book on psychoanalysis theory and he states that this is a defense mechanism such that he gives the classic example in psychoanalysis back then, uh, 30, 40 years ago especially, of how when someone can't address issues 
that hurt them in the past, they um, wish to take out their anger or whatnot. I might call it even revenge or lack of understanding that can't um, make things reframe properly. Take it out on somebody else then, kind of a surrogate uh, former injurer, typically a parent, but not always. Noting thus, uh, oftentimes then leaving the nest and statute of limitations running up by age 21 or so, it becomes increasingly difficult, especially if a parent has more power in certain ways than a young youth, uh, legal power, to do anything about it. And so this festers and festers and festers. Additionally, many of the things that a parent can do, so to speak, to a child, I would state, first of all, uh, I have a problem with the word doing if, in fact, there's no choice involved. Everything is a concatenation of uh, cause and effect. But at any rate, if this whole process can't be understood and resolved, typically called forgiveness, then this festers and to the extent it can't be addressed toward a parent or, say, toward a former spouse from a divorce, it tends to um, seek an outlet. Now note, I had once been uh, in therapy for years on and off in psychoanalysis, and one practitioner told me as advice to get a pillow and hit it. Well, I suppose one step up in that advice then would get to pillow and stab it with a knife. But she did not tell me to take anger that was felt toward a particular person or group of persons or institution and direct it toward whoever was handy and you thought would not fight back injuriously toward you or your career or your reputation. Hence why, by the way, I notice from time to time videos and more talking of the bad effects of being too nice a guy or gal. One's being then a setup to be dumped on. In other words, a surrogate source for pillow punching or more by somebody who can't get back to the original source or moreover resolve that pain. Also, when you watch videos, say, or read something on quote-unquote narcissists, you would discover a point of view quite prevalent that the so-called narcissist is very perceptive as to who they wish to seek out, to target, to hurt, to control. I would call that a strong degree of empathy. Empathy, in fact, that has been highly honed. Take two. A lion or maybe uh, some other animal that pursues other animals for meat for for in for dining shall we say uh, these animals know how to target the young the old animal and the diseased sick animal they have almost what you might call a sixth sense or they're highly empathic Highly empathetic toward the weak animal, but toward a rather um, not so good end to the other animal. But highly empathetic, you could say. Similarly, I bet you could take any quote unquote publicized mass murderer and say they too were highly empathetic as per being able to notice who they could hurt and uh, get a great bang for the buck on that as per their actions. Likewise for sexual predators, highly empathic, highly empathetic in terms of knowing target, targetable people and knowing it would hurt too, hurt the other person emotionally. Similarly, a loose definition of the term empathetic again, a burglar who wishes to steal television sets, credit cards for identity, uh, and more, they know exactly how to target the most uh, um, 
appropriate targets for their benefit, and I would call them thus highly empathetic in terms of perceptive. Isn't that then what empathetic means on the core level? Perceptivity, as opposed to being asleep, of course, or again, numbed out on something. So if empathy is not then a desire, um, well, let me put it this way, backing up. If empathy is simply high perceptivity and oftentimes gone awry, then what can we call something more than just uh, this perceptivity? What can we call the person who simply does not want to hurt other people for the uh, for the um, pleasure of seeing the other person hurt, especially at one's own hand. You see then the dilemma, where is the word for this? We might call it love, but there are many people perhaps who question what love is. Maybe instead of saying that we're looking for an empathetic person to be friends with, or to uh, have a spouse for, uh, what not. Maybe we should call this um, the search for someone with strong senses of responsibility. In other words, if they were hurt in the past, they see the original source, but they don't wish to, quote, pass it on, to dump this anger resolved, unresolved, onto someone else. They let it sit with the originator. In other words, if they're bitter uh, about something, they know the source of the bitterness and they don't extend it to all people in terms of um, wanting to take this anger and displace it somewhere else, handy, wherever. You might say, wherever, uh, it's not going to injure you. Um, to be rather somewhat uh, funny or not, there being phrases, of course, don't pee in your own cup or uh, don't pee in the wind. Uh, you know what I mean. And so that, of course, meaning maybe some people would do it where it wouldn't come back on them. In other words, against those who are not your allies, not your business partners, not something that's going to come back and hurt you necessarily right now, too. So the next time we ask ourselves, who's empathetic and who's not? Maybe we ought to take that word and throw it out of our dictionary and replace it with who's responsible and who's not, as to their feelings if there is a significant degree of anger, and particularly unresolved anger. For instance, then, if someone had a bitter divorce, they will state to themselves, if responsible, I believe, that their anger is there, not uh, totally resolved by any means, but that the anger came from one source or a few sources, not, uh, not to be put upon anyone handy. You might say then, too, that it is not to take that example from um, a parent or something else similar and to state that all men are bad or all such and such are bad as a rationalization tool more than anything perhaps to dump one's anger upon anyone else other than your prime um, allies so to speak your prime money sources and so on your prime sources of self-esteem anyone else handy other than that, and targetable as per seemingly not going to fight back or have it blow up in your face. This then is what I mean by true empathy, perhaps, but that can get very confusing. Once again, perhaps for now, I think the term might better be used as um, taking responsibility for your feelings, for your anger, and keeping it in that compartment and moreover not wanting to put it upon anyone handy uh, to bleed this off so to speak displace it 
temporarily reduce the anger level, but of course it would always come back. Kind of like um, if you bury something in the sand, uh, moisture will probably seep up from the bottom uh, into a container, and this will happen even if you drain the container, it's going to seep back up in. Until you understand what happened to motivate, to drive, and compel a person to hurt you in the first place when they were typically a parent. Thoughts here.